Um, headline number one, 2025 recruiting is in full swing for Nebraska. And that's kind of what the month of January has become in college football. Um, no more is January trying to lock up your signees. Everybody's signed. I mean, Nebraska had 26 um, signees and really like 29 okay. um, that you would kind of label scholarship guys. And they're all signed. Okay. Um, as of right now, today, there's not a high school signee that would sign in February. That could still change. I mean, there's a couple targets out there. They've added some walk-ons like Jordan Ochoa, Rowdy Bauer mm -hmm. um, in the last few weeks. Um, but right now, the focus is going in to see juniors and sophomores. And this is the first year coaches can actually legally meet with them. Before, all you could do is informally bump into them, mm -hmm. which – we all know a lot more than that typically happened. Sure. Uh, but now like you can actually sit down and meet and speak with prospects at length. Um, so it has been a pretty uh, busy January for all coaches in college football. Well, better be busy and they better be busy. Nebraska better be busy recruiting defensive linemen. I mean, that's, I think that would be a, well, that's a priority for sure. Right. And Jalen Williams is coming in this weekend for what is it just a one day visit? One day visit. Yeah, Jalen Williams um will be one of the bigger names coming in this weekend, a top level defensive lineman out of the state of Illinois. Now he's got every offer under the sun. Michigan's one of the teams the have big one. The big one. I mean, he's got them all. Notre Dame, Michigan, you name it. But Nebraska will get Jalen Williams here for a day. And I think you hope that one day visit can get him back here for more. Jalen Williams of Palatine, Illinois. So he's the number six rated player in the state of Illinois. He's the number 24 defensive lineman in the class of 2025. Okay. He is absolutely the kind of player you need in a program. I mean, of course, Michigan is trending toward landing him. But why not? I mean, look what Michigan did up front this year. If you're a young defensive lineman watching the national title game, what goes through your mind? Wow, they just wrecked Washington up front. Their interior defensive lineman, in some ways, Sean, took over that game. So Jalen Williams is the, exactly the kind of guy Nebraska needs, and it is a position of need. The class of 2025 has Tyson Terry. You need somebody to go along with Tyson Terry. You are looking for a, basically a replacement for Carlon Jones, right? Basically. Right. Well, I mean, and Ashton Williams, they signed. Yeah. And I do think between Landon Davidson and, and some of the other high school O linemen they signed, okay. there's always a chance that one of those guys yeah. could play D line. Yeah. So, absolutely. The one thing about the Matt Rule model of recruiting is it, it does preach versatility, and they're not afraid to flip a guy to the other side of the field. Mm -hmm. We've seen it already. Yeah. Well, you better get good ones. We, we, we know what wins in this league, and a big part of the formula is being strong up front on both sides and right now nebraska is a little light when in when you talk about younger players on the defensive line riley van poppel is is going to be very good jason we'll call him shake shack i think it's mache shack is that right mache check mache check is is a looks like he's going to be a player he's gonna be on the o-line though Huh. Machacek moved I'm over. Just reading Brian's story on my screen. Yeah, they moved Machacek over late in the year to the. It's hard line. to keep track. Of no, that. and and they have. I mean, okay. like, um, the defense was the defensive lineman. They moved over. Okay. To the O line in the middle of the year too, but Machacek is offense has played both. Okay. Like Mason Goldman has proven that he could play both, but Mason Goldman's of the O line, and he's you know shown that he could play D line. So that's the thing that's confusing. What's not confusing though is quarterback. I mean. You, you only take one quarterback, and they've been pretty selective about you know, who they've offered and gone after at the quarterback position um, for Nebraska. And you know, you, you can pull up on on three. We have a, a really nice thing on our football recruiting tab. You can just go to offers, okay, and um, it will tell you all the offers they've made for each position. And you look at the quarterback one, and clearly Alex Mansky has been um, the main guy Nebraska has gone after at quarterback, but you know, Mansky is trending towards Iowa State. You know, is he? he um, he's looking at AM. Um, and I think just that shadow of Dylan Riola and Lincoln makes it kind of tough um, to get some of these guys to, to maybe uh, go the other direction. So, you know, Mansky clearly is a target for Nebraska. Now, the other quarterback name out there is Matt Zollers from mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. They've mm -hmm. got an offer into him, a four star to Pennsylvania. But the other guys they've offered at quarterback have already committed elsewhere. Julian Lewis is going to USC. He's a top five-star guy. 
Blake Herbert is going to Clemson. You know, he's a top four star guy. Um, Stone Saunders, who was here earlier this summer, he's a commitment to Kentucky. Luke Nickel is a commitment to Miami. And then uh, Garrett Odom is going to play for his father, at UNLV. Um, so right now, Alex Mansky and then Matt Zollers are the two names on the quarterback board that could expand, though, quickly. Um, and I think a lot of it will be based on Mansky. And can they get him on campus? Yeah, and Mansky Again. would expect – okay, Mansky's from Algona, Iowa. He's pretty much what Nebraska looks for. And in a 6'2", 210. He's 6'3", 205. Okay, so he can run it, but – he can, I don't know, can he throw it 60 yards, you think? Is he, yeah. Does he have that kind of arm? I mean, that that's the kind of guy they're looking for. Now, here's the question. The broad question is, when you have two pretty high-profile freshmen, incoming freshman quarterbacks, is it more difficult to recruit an incoming quarterback for the 2025 It finals? can be. And I think Nebraska over the years dealt with it a little bit. When you start a freshman quarterback, yeah, a true freshman, Adrian Martinez, do you Ta think they'll start Rayola? <laughs> Taylor Martinez is a redshirt freshman starter. Tommy Sorry. Armstrong took over yeah. as a redshirt freshman. Okay. It's a great deal, but okay. it's also a bad deal for your recruiting. It can be. Because it makes it harder to sell because it's in about any form of life, it's extremely difficult to unseat an incumbent. Politics. There's your politics. Political, political background is coming through. I mean, anything, though. Not, right. I mean, no, you're right. So if you're or, or look at it like this, if you're Mansky's parent or guardian and you're looking at Nebraska and you see all this all this publicity, you see Dylan Riola sitting with the volleyball coach, sitting with the AD. I suppose Jim I suppose Pillen's next on the agenda here. <laughs> um yeah, you you probably now our, our colleague Amy Just, by the way, tweeted that the reason he moved to those seats mm -hmm. was because he was getting hounded by so many people for pictures and autographs in the stands okay. that the event staff moved Dylan Riola down to the floor seat there. Ooh, that's interesting. He was getting hounded by that. I mean, that just much. so many people were coming up and getting a picture with him. And Amy Just uh, tweeted that um, at the game. She was at the game. God bless her. Good information. There. Yeah, really good information. That's, and that's really interesting. Adds a little bit more context. I mean, it's not like they're like trying to just give him courtside seats. I mean, I, I think he wanted to watch the game. I mean, it's really interesting that he attracts that much attention, isn't it? As a as a true freshman, incoming freshman. So yeah, you back to the Mansky and I go Matt Zoller's conversation. It's a lot to ask. It depends kind of what you're looking for. Most kids are coming in looking to play. Some might say, I'm not quite ready. I'm, I'm willing to sit. But, man, you don't – hey, Sean, how often do you find that anymore? And they covet – and uh, Man Mansky is a three-star as well. He's like a middle-of-the-road three-star, but they really covet his skill set. I mean, it, it, he's a multi-sport athlete, plays been, baseball, he pitches. Been here at camp. Been to camp several times. <laughs> yeah. June in June, he was here in June. We'll tell that joke another day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, Mansky, I don't know, Sean. Would you still say he's their number one target? I think so for okay. now, but um, we don't believe he's going to be here this weekend. And the fact okay. that he hasn't come on any of these January weekends, well, guess what happens after this weekend? The dead period. Oh, interesting. Then it, you can't visit again. So what you're trying to do right now in recruiting, you want guys to visit in January right now. Mm -hmm. And then you want them to come back in March or April for spring. Okay. Then you want them to come back again for an official visit in June, and you want them, you want them to commit. That's the cycle. Like that's what you 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 strive for, like a three visit run mm -hmm. from now to June. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, the data tells you these kids will be Huskers. And when you're when's the commitment? When what what's the ideal time for the, the commitment? For After, quarterback or for anybody? Well, quarterbacks go off the board first. May. April, April and May. Yeah. Like Dylan Raiola was a late quarterback recruit last year when he picked Georgia, which caused Nebraska to pivot to Kalen mm -hmm. um, at that moment. Uh, but generally, April and May, because most teams say we only got one spot. Mm -hmm. So you can use that as leverage to force the cycle a little bit. Well, from what I'm listening to you right now, Sean, it sounds like the ship on Mansky sailing. Um, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I still think he's in play, but I mean, I'm not going to overreact to him not visiting Nebraska in January. Okay. I'm not okay. yet. Okay. I mean, I, okay. Um, I mean, why not visit a and M he's not visited there yet. He just yeah. got an offer. Why not visit a and M when they maybe have the best 
collective in the country, if not the second best. Texas, Tennessee, Tennessee University of Texas, Miami, A and M, Tennessee. Now USC's collective is good, but it's good for transfers, is and, my understanding. I mean, when we when on three did its rankings in the summer, Tennessee was number one, and Texas A and M was number two. Rankings of collectives: Collect Tennessee one, A and M two. That'd be a good reason to go down there. He's a quarterback. I mean, how much money is he going to command? The oh, question wow. is, like, is that who Mike Elko wants as his, like, first quarterback? Well, that's a good question. I mean, it's a big, big deal. It's a good question. Like, that's your – but the X factor there are two X factors. Colin Klein, he's a Midwest guy that knew Mansky from K-State. Okay. And then Christian Ellsworth at Nebraska is now at A&M. Really, and he he's carrying an analyst title, but he's going to be one of those really elevated. I heard he's going to be making like you know really good money as an analyst there. So those two guys have great knowledge of Mansky that they've brought to Elko, and Elko was at Duke. So you know I don't think he's quite as enamored probably to have to have all five star guys at A and M. He's probably not, but but that is a whole other in interesting discussion with Elko there. How are those fans going to react when if they would bring in a three-star quarterback from Iowa? I think well, I think Mansky's underrated too. Okay. I really do. I mean, you look at his film, he reminds you a lot of like a Josh Allen. He's big, he's physical, he can run. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. he's got a great arm. Really, I mean, it's really interesting. And we uh, as we've learned, and we it really the point was driven home to me and and I think you to a certain extent in in Hawaii. The star thing matters more than ever. For NIL. For NIL. Because the collectives base some of their evaluation monetarily on how many stars you have. So kids kids are paying attention to their rating more than ever. I don't know that they, they mean more than they've ever meant to me, but to the kids and to their handlers, the stars mean more than they've ever meant. Especially when you go from a three to a four and a four to a five. Yep. I mean, big jump.